What's going on, guys? Let's give a huge shout out to Editor X for sponsoring this video, and let's jump in. In this lesson, we're going to build out our features section, and we're going to do that using the power of grids and layouters. Layouters are pretty cool. Let me show you. If we go to our quick add panel under layout tools, we see a category of layout where we can choose from a predefined template. For example, we can use this one, which has a three layout grid. You can see here, it added a new section for us and it's similar to our design in Figma. So all we really need to do is start customizing it. We see the layers has a container for the title, a stack for the summary, and even a button. Why don't we go ahead and add in our own button that we have in our design library. So right under design libraries, if you remember, we had added a simple button for us to repurpose. Let's go ahead and change this to movies and games and expand it just a little bit so that it fits well. In our text, we want to simply change this to stream VR network, which is just a subtitle. We can customize the text also using the little editing pop-up. For example, here, I'd like to change this to a heading three or maybe a heading two so that it really pops. And don't worry about the sizing yet. Let's add in some character spacing. What we want to do is because this is part of a stack, we can play around with the size. Let's make sure this is 100% width. And also the actual stack itself, we can make it at 75%. Notice how that one is a little bit bigger than the summary. So let's do the same thing here. 75% for the summary and make sure that the docking is top and left and the margin is always the same. So this should be 10% and this one also should be at 10. Now what's happening is not taking it because it's not docked to the left. As soon as we dock it to the left and change the margin, it's going to match the summary. For summary, let's clean this up a little bit. Let's change the paragraph to one. It's a little bit bigger, which I like, and let's remove this excess. Okay, this looks good. Now for the image on the right, we can browse our library. We're looking for a portrait photo so that it matches nice in our design. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. There we go. So if we preview this, hmm, yeah, this is looking good. And I think we can, I think the only thing we need to, to change is the margin in that features title. It seems that there's a gap and that happens sometimes with fonts that you import. They're not properly designed for web. So all we gotta do is select the actual title and add in some negative margins. Let's just add five more. Yeah, okay, that's much better. Now we can see how the VR hands are sitting behind. So if we open up our layer section, let's quickly rename this to features. And if we start moving these sections up and down, the only thing we're changing is the hierarchy. We're not changing the arrangement or order. We need to send this feature section all the way to the back. That way the section above it will be able to overlap on top. Just like this. All right, so what I like to show you guys is that when you work with grids or layouts, you have several options. Now, if you notice, this image is extending all the way to the bottom. Again, because this is a grid, we can have elements extend across. So let's go ahead and open up the grid area. And while I'm selecting this image, I can change the row start and end point. And notice how it starts from the second column to the third column. You can play around with this as much as you want. What I want to do is add in that parallax effect again into this image. And let's click preview. So now we have this beautiful effect, including these floating elements, making this design feel fresh and modern. All right, guys, let's go ahead and play with more layouters. We can go in here and simply add in a layout or a mosaic it's going to simply fall on top of our current section. So the best way to do this is instead, just simply select the little blue icon in the bottom. 
we add in a layouter and from there we can choose what type of layouter we want either a mosaic or a three grid or four grid we can play around with this layouter by simply using this plus icon to increase the size of each column and editor x will basically take care of the mosaic design which is really really useful if we click on change layout we get a pop-up with some settings we can change to rows or change to columns you can always change the sizing using this little plus and minus icons on each individual block every block behaves like its own container so you can see here we can apply a grid if you think it makes sense in your design. You can also remove them by simply deleting the blocks or by right clicking and adding additional items into your layout. One thing I wanna do is make sure we have zero margins on our settings. The reason why it's because it's easier for me to explain how layouter works. So for now, I'm just going to change some colors and I'm going to add in a couple of numbers here so that you get a better idea of how this really works. No matter what size you have on each one of these, you can always click the equalize button to have them match the same size or fit within the same um, container. So for example, here, each one of these is 25%. But if it give 100% to the final fourth item, the rest of the items will equalize the width to match the mosaic design that we've chosen. Over here, we can change the direction of the flow of how these items behave. Once you feel good about the design, you can start adding margins back so that you can get a better sense of separation from each of these blocks. I'm going to go ahead and quickly modify the container of this element into a real content block. Okay, so for example here, I'm going to change to our real title. I'm going to go ahead and add in an icon. The important thing here I want to show you is when you put in any element within these blocks, you can play with margins all you want. But at the end of the day, you want to make a solid foundation for your website. So if we select our parent block and maybe start adding some padding on the top and left, making sure that the content wraps itself in there without having to worry about all these margin left and right in the docking system. I think this will really help you in the future workflow. All right, so this looks good, but let's go ahead and make this stack and expand to 100% of our parent container. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing, but on the other side. So let's duplicate this, move it around, make sure that we follow the same guidelines of docking to the left. And notice how, because this is part of a layouter, we can start stretching these elements out just to see how things behave. You can always go back to the layouter configuration and simply change everything back by using the equalize button. So let's add some padding in that third block. So we can do that individually or by hitting this little lock icon, it'll apply whatever value you put in there to all different sides. I'm gonna swap out the icon. And this is what I love about stacks is that you can just drag any element, move it around at different hierarchy and it just snaps into place. This is gonna make your life so much easier. Make sure that you add in the correct margin values so that it gives that nice spacing. And then for the middle, I think let's just go ahead and add in an image for now. For this lesson, I want to focus on the testimonial. I'm thinking here, this is a New York Times little quote. So I'm going to export this logo. Let's give it this section a minimum height of 600 and change this back to white so that our text and logo pops real well. I think what we can do here is add a nice quote shape and we can browse through the library that editor x provides we can just simply search for something like quote and if we don't find anything you know you can filter by vector art which gives us a little bit more variation all right so this first one seems like a good fit for our design and it even has this little grungy style into it Let's change the color to our primary. Now we can scale this to a fixed or fluid value. Make sure we center this in our container. So position it docked entirely in the middle. We have no margins and we can start adding contents. So here we're going to add our first quote. We can stretch this out 100% 
and make sure that we center this entirely docked in the middle. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to change the font so that we have a highlight on stream BR. Just like that. Change maybe the font size so that the entire thing fits well within 100%. And finally, I want to go ahead and add the logo. The images that we bring in sometimes get cropped off. But simple way to fix this is by stretching it out and stretching it back down. This will automatically fix the proportion of that image. We'll see another way to reset that image in another lesson. For now, let's go ahead and select both of these elements and stack them together. Make sure that we center them. And once we have that, we can preview and boom. Look at that. OK. <laughs> All right. So why don't you guys give it a try? It's really simple and uh, you can get really cool results. So let's get into our next lesson and check out the movies and games.